Thursday. Happy Thursday, everybody. Mark Grimion again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you an update on what's going on with Invest 91L. A lot of people are talking about this is going to be a major Cat 3, Cat 4 hurricane affecting Nicaragua, doing catastrophic damage, and I'm not seeing that information. I am showing no matter what, there will be serious mudslides and serious flooding, just like National Hurricane Center has already noted days ago with this system, and it is going to be a lot of problems. But I'm going to show you, will this storm become a major hurricane? All I ask is if you're in the Caribbean, please share this to other people in the Caribbean. I know it's hard to get coverage in the Caribbean. A lot of people don't really care about the Caribbean unless something seriously devastating is passing through. Let others know what is going on because other people have been putting out videos, sad to say, here on YouTube, letting you know that you're going to be having a catastrophic event coming, Cat 3, Cat 4, major hurricane, and it's going to be affecting everybody and a lot of people are up in a panic and it's just not true it is gonna be some bad flooding some serious mudslides so it is gonna be a serious condition but you're not gonna be dealing with a cat 3 cat 4 winds also i also have links in the description of what i'm about to show you and zoomable maps so you can see your rainfall mounts and your potential wind gusts that's coming your way so you can prepare the best way that you can because invest 91l has already done some serious impacts this rainfall is not going to be a joke with this system it went to trinidad and tobago and it did some serious flooding this is on sunset drive aruca as a result from invest 91l plus they also had more flooding from the five rivers flooding at first street five rivers aruca i apologize if i pronounced that wrong and you can also see over here in the vicinity of Cemetery Street, there was a lot of flooding going on with Invest 91L. Plus, we have some new updated images from what happened with Fort Myers Beach, Florida from Major Hurricane Ian. And the images are devastating, guys. Remember, links in the description if you want to go watch these videos all the way through. But this clearly shows you how bad it was for everybody over there. It was just seriously catastrophic. Now, Florida is starting to get almost all their power back. There's still over 200,000 homes without power, and they have been some looting going on on the island from three immigrants. Matter of fact, he constructed the Pine Island Bridge, so now people can go over to Pine Island, see what's going on with the homes, maybe gather their stuff and see what's going on so we can get residents back on their feet. So that is some good news. As of this morning, it is going through Venezuela, dropping a lot of heavy rainfall as well. They're about to have problems all day long with this. Then it's going to move over towards Colombia. Then it's going to break away into the Caribbean and go towards Nicaragua after that. Now, when you take a look at National Hurricane Center, in 24 hours, they have it right here. And in 48 hours, they have it maybe strengthening to a low-end, maybe a high-end tropical storm as it makes its way towards Venezuela. And you can see where it's coming off the coast at. And in this region, there's not a lot of deep ocean heat content to support rapid intensification like the H wharf is showing. So as you look at the intensity guidance that we have for Invest 91L, in 48 hours, it will be strengthening. And in 72 hours, all of them show from 48 to 72 hours, it will be at least a tropical storm, maybe a high-end tropical storm. And when it gets towards landfall, it could be a Cat 1 at the last minute, strengthening up to a Cat 1 hurricane not a major hurricane. And you can see here with the H wharf that it actually is going through a lot of warm temperatures, but literally in 48 hours, it's already down to a 992. And as you keep going forward, you can see how it just rapid intensifies as it goes towards Nicaragua, eating up all them sea surface temperatures. Now it is warm enough sea surface temperatures to sustain a tropical system. All you need is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and it definitely has that. But it, what it don't have is deep ocean heat content right here to support rapid intensification to a major hurricane. But people are pushing this issue because as you can see for yourself, it is showing the worst case scenario, a major hurricane going towards Nicaragua. Now this is bad enough for dealing with the flooding as well as the mudslides. But to say that they're going to get over 100, maybe even 130 miles per hour wind gusts coming their direction, that's just not right. 
And when you look at the deep ocean heat content, you can see when it comes off of Columbia, there's a little bit of deep ocean heat content. That's where the system strengthens up. It starts upwelling the temperatures that are deep into the ocean rather than the sea surface temperatures because it's going to eat those up. There's a little bit when it comes off land, but once it goes west towards Nicaragua, there's no deep ocean heat content right here. This is cooler waters. This would not support rapid intensification to a major hurricane. But yet, when you look at the H Wharf in 72 hours, it already has it down to a very strong hurricane and strengthening up as it gets towards Nicaragua without any deep ocean heat content. People like to push this issue, they get lots of views, and that's all they care about is putting money in their pocket. They don't care about your safety or concern. And H Wharf has some GFS data into it. That's why it's always bullish. But if you remember, the H Wharf wire thing showed a southwest push because we have a big high pressure directing it to the southwest. H Wharf ensemble showed us going to Puerto Rico, which was not accurate. Then it changed going towards the Yucatan. Now it's changed going towards Nicaragua. And that is exactly what the euro has been seeing the whole time. So H Wharf is all over the place. If somebody just shows you the worst case scenario, just click off their video. They're just trying to make money off your view. They don't care about giving you the truth on what could happen with this system. It is going to be a big deal with this flooding and mudslides already. People don't need to hear about this crazy major hurricane bringing all these serious winds. Now to HMON. HMON is a little bit more accurate. And you can see in 48 hours, it literally has it starting to strengthen off land. And as you keep going, going, you can see in 72 hours, it has it as a tropical storm, maybe a strong tropical storm, and right before landfall, maybe getting down towards a hurricane. Not a high-end hurricane, not a major hurricane, but it is a good potential. It does have a long track of sea surface temperatures. It could be a high-end tropical storm, a low-end hurricane. And you can see with the hurricane panel that in 48 hours, is just starting to get itself together. And as it comes towards Nicaragua, you can see the broad area it is covering. It is bringing heavy rain bands all over Nicaragua, Honduras. This is going to affect a little bit of Costa Rica, Guatemala, and Belize with the amount of rainfall. And with y'all high mountainous regions, all these valleys are going to fill up fast and y'all will have mudslides. So the rain, regardless of major hurricane or not, the rain is going to be your biggest impact from this system. There is going to be some high winds, but your, your rain is really going to be something you need to watch out for and prepare because it is going to come right through Nicaragua, bringing all this heavy rain, and it is expanded all the way out to Honduras, Belize, also Guatemala. Now, you can also see when you look at the wind speed that in 48 hours, it will become a tropical storm. The next name on the list is Julia, but that don't matter. It's just a name. But as you keep going forward, you see it stays a tropical storm. It even weakens down for a moment. It gets strong, weakens down. And as it keeps going forward, you can see it stays a tropical storm till right before landfall, be right on the edge of a low-end Cat 1 hurricane, not a major hurricane. And you can even see in 72 hours, according to National Hurricane Center, it'll be right off the coast, right by Nicaragua, 1003, a tropical storm. And this is where it's going to start strengthening to a strong tropical storm, potential low-end Cat 1 hurricane. And to bring a little bit more information, you can see right here, according to Euro, in 48 hours, it is starting to strengthen up to where it'll be a tropical storm. And as it goes towards Nicaragua, you see it goes down to a 987 potential low-end Cat 1 hurricane. Also the GFS, 48 hours, 1004, not something already a tropical storm strengthening to a hurricane like H Wharf. And as it goes towards Nicaragua, towards landfall, it agrees it will go down maybe to a strong tropical storm, maybe a very weak low in a hurricane. It literally is going to be right at the last few hours when this starts getting to a potential hurricane. Also the Canadian, 48 hours, a potential tropical depression, tropical storm. And so far the Canadian does take it to where it's the strongest potential down to a 970, potential a little bit stronger 
of a hurricane. So you can see this on an eight o'clock update from National Hurricane Center. It's still 80% in 48 hours, 90% in five days. And it is showing that it is a broad and elongated area of low pressure located over the far southeastern Caribbean Sea, just off the coast of Venezuela. And it does go and it does continue to produce an expansive area of showers and thunderstorms over the southern windward islands, North, South America, and adjacent waters. While land interaction with the northern coast of South America may hinder significant development during the next day or so, environmental conditions are expected to be mostly conducive for development while the system moves westward at about 15 miles per hour, and a tropical depression is likely to form in the next day or two by the time it enters South Central Caribbean Sea. Additional strengthening is anticipated while the system moves westward over the southwestern Caribbean Sea towards Central America late Friday through Sunday. But still, regardless of development, the main thing you do have to worry about is a lot of heavy rainfall, potential mudslides coming out of the system for you guys. So I have this link in the description. It is a zoomable link. It lets you know what you can expect. And this is on wind gusts. It is in miles per hour. Now you can see the biggest one is where it goes over San Andreas, Big Corn Island. Y'all have the biggest chance of getting the highest winds as well as the coast of Nicaragua. High 60 miles per hour wind gust potential. And as it goes over the rest of Nicaragua, Honduras, even Guatemala, everybody is getting around high 50 miles per hour wind gusts as this passes by also the rainfall it is going to bring a lot of rainfall so in the next five days you can see it's going to affect a little bit of costa rica nicaragua honduras guatemala it is it is going all over towards belize as well but when you look at the heaviness you can see right over san andreas right over big corn island blue fields pearl lagoon all this is getting very heavy rainfall 10 inches plus so there's a lot of towns in this area i know how y'all are worried about getting mudslides getting everything that you can get out of this system this is a zoomable link zoom into your town and see exactly what amount of rainfall what your wind gust is going to be from the system as this passes by so you can have the most accurate data for your area now it's passing over venezuela and it is going towards colombia later tonight and for all day tomorrow then it's going to get off land tomorrow night and it's going to start strengthening to where it has a chance to become a tropical storm in the Caribbean. As you go through Saturday, it's going to make its way towards San Andreas. It's going to start strengthening up to a high-end tropical storm. And overnight Saturday, which is the worst part, this is an overnight storm into the early morning hours for you. It is going to start strengthening to a potential low-end Cat 1 hurricane. It does weaken when it goes by San Andreas and the Big Corn Island because these are high elevation mountains right here. So it is ripping it apart a little bit and it does weaken right back down right before landfall. And so far it is going towards Pearl Lagoon. Like I said, I know there's a lot of y'all in this area. So please go to this link, zoom into your area so you can see what your impacts are. Because a lot of y'all out there and all y'all hearing is a major hurricane bringing catastrophic results. When you have enough to worry about just with the flooding and the mudslides because all the mountainous regions with all these valleys is really going to hinder y'all and mess y'all up a little bit. So please prepare for these flooding and mudslides and some high winds. But it is going to die down. It is going to be 50 to 60 miles per hour wind gust as it passes through. It's not going to be over 100 like you're being told. Even when you look at all the ensembles, this is a picture graph of all those little squiggly lines people show you. This is what the outcome looks like. And the only one you got to pay attention to is this one. This is your controlled member. This is your more than likely outcome of what could happen out of all these possibilities. In 48 hours, it will be something weak, but starting to strengthen up towards a tropical storm, especially as it gets closer towards Nicaragua. And then as it gets towards four days away, that's where you're going to have your landfall, potentially high-end tropical storm, maybe a on-the-edge, low-end hurricane. And I really dislike these people that do fear-mongering against y'all because they know y'all don't have a lot of coverage and y'all looking everywhere for coverage, and it's not right. This is Brian. His name is Mr. Weatherman on YouTube. I don't know if you ever heard from him. I've always suggested his video many times. He is a meteorologist. He is very smart. And he always says no island is too small for him. 
please go to the link in the description. Subscribe to him. He covers the Caribbean almost every day. That's what he sticks to, just the Caribbean. So I know y'all need coverage a lot more often than what y'all get. Please go to, to Brian. He will tell you the truth. Make sure you tell him I said hi because this man does a wonderful job. God bless you, Brian. I also waited for the intensity guidance update because I really want to bring y'all as much information as y'all can to prove my point that it's not going to be a major hurricane. I've seen the stories out there and it's terrible. People are like that. They're really not God-fearing people because they would not be doing that to y'all, letting y'all think y'all have this catastrophic event coming. The flooding and the mudslides is going to be bad enough. Invest 91L, the 12Z. So far, it shows in 48 hours, it will become a tropical storm. In 72 hours, it will start strengthening to where it could be a low-end Cat 1 hurricane, maybe a high-end Cat 1 hurricane. But you see how everything's downgraded. None of the model guidance is showing this is going to be a major hurricane for you guys. And for those that followed my story on my community tab yesterday, that big outburst that came out of the sun yesterday, we have an update on what the potential impacts are because they did not know because the CME just went too fast. The magnetic filament in the sun's southern hemisphere that erupted yesterday, hurling parts of itself into space. The emergent CME, coronal mass ejection, will pass mostly to the south of our planet. But a fraction could graze Earth's magnetic field on the 8th. So any of those that love auroras, there could be a minor geomagnetic storm around the 8th, maybe linger to the 9th. You'll have the best potential to see it around the 8th. And that's it. Good chance for auroras, no other impacts. God bless all y'all in the Caribbean dealing with this situation. And once again, I apologize for a fellow YouTuber to be doing this. Because most of us here on YouTube, we want to help you. We want to give you as much information as we can. Last thing we want to do is tell you lies. That is not the way to go, especially with weather. So to give you a little bit of insight in that, I'm going to read Revelation 21, 1 through 8. A little word from our Father. Amen. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write. For these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Amen. God bless you all today. I hope you have a very blessed day. If you're in the path of this system, please prepare for some serious flooding coming. If you're by some valleys in the mountainous regions of Nicaragua, please prepare for these mudslides. It is going to be a serious event enough for y'all, but no major hurricane. All glory does go to God, our Father in heaven, and he will keep you safe. Pray to him. He loves to answer prayers. Don't support these fear mongers. All they love is money. But all glory does go to God forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you all.